Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to say that today we have a premiere. So up to now, extra zoom endoscopes were available only in Japan, but thanks to the new X1 system, it is possible to merge Lucera and Xera system systems into one. And thanks to this particular solution, we can use these optical zoom endoscopes of 1200 series uh, right now in Europe and in the USA. So it's really exciting and we have two people who have already tried this system and uh, both of them are uh, with us today. Horst, you are the first one to, to tell us about your experience with the new system. Yeah, thank you very much, Michelle. Firstly, I would like uh, to thank uh, Stefan for inviting me. It's a great pleasure to participate in this uh, extremely interesting conference. Now, uh, we had um, the opportunity to use the GIF uh, XZ1200 and also the col uh, colonoscope uh, within the last three weeks. And I would like uh, to show you some examples of interesting cases. First one, uh, 55 years old male patient, no symptoms, he underwent screening colonoscopy and the endoscopist recommended uh, to also to undergo an EGD. And uh, he saw a small reddish area at the Z-line, took biopsies and histology, surprisingly showed Barrett's with high-grade intraepithelial neoplasia. So firstly, I would like uh, to show now the evaluation with uh, white light endoscopy using this uh, 1200 gastroscope, and you may appreciate this small reddish area at the Z-line. No other tongues. Now I switch to TXI, so texture and color enhancement, and you may even better see the enhanced color and the mucosal changes. And now we use the NBI. You see this uh, darker area. And now we magnify up to 120 fold. You see the regular pits here of the gastric mucosa. And now we have the small tongue here. And you can see small irregularities of the vascular structure and of the mucosa. So this is an area with a diameter of maybe three millimeters. And uh, these uh, findings have an impact on treatment because we can now re limit the resection just to this small spot. So we mark the lesion, cap resection, and the histopathology showed a well-differentiated adenocarcinoma invading between the two uh, muscularis mucosa layers. So it's M3, L0, V0, the tumor budding 1, R0, and uh, as I said, well-differentiated. So a curative treatment of an extremely small lesion. Another case, 69 years old male patient underwent uh, EGD for surveillance of Barrett's. And uh, the quite experienced endoscopist saw no suspicious lesion. Uh, I don't know which type of endoscope he used. He took uh, random biopsies and uh, surprisingly histology showed high-grade empathelial neoplasia and adenocarcinoma and several biopsies. Now this is now a TXI using the new gastroscope. And with this improved white light, you see an irregular surface, more or less at all sides. This is a 3C3 M4. Also slightly elevated areas. Now we're close to the ED junction. Now the question is, we know high-grade dysplasia, adenocarcinoma, but which area should be resected? Which are the areas which are cancerous? Now, this is now NBI. And now we scan the whole Barrett segment with NBI and with magnification. 
and you can appreciate this irregular surface pattern and also irregular disruptive vascular pattern, vascular pattern, more or less at all areas. So just we'll see now at the EG junction, magnification. So on the left side, you see regular tubular pattern. In the center, depression, amorphous surface pattern. So in fact, we saw very few regular islands of Barrett's. And therefore, we decided to do a on block ESD of the whole Barrett segment, so a circumferential ESD. And histology luckily showed that this had been a curative treatment. Uh, Barrett's well differentiated adenocarcinoma M3L0V0BD1 R0. So now, cases uh, from the rectum. 76 years old male patient, screening colonoscopy, detection of a neoplastic lesion approaching the anal verge. You see a non-granular type of lateral spreading tumor with a depression in the center. Now the question is, what to do with such a case? This is from the macroscopic ex uh, appearance, suspicious for cancer, TXI. But now we would like to know, is it suspicious for cancer? Are there any signs of deep submucosal invasion? So for the JNET classification, we need magnification. We switch now to NBI. And now magnification seems to be very important in such a case. You see on the edge of this lesion, there is still quite regular pattern here on the right side. This is uh, JNET 2A. But on the left, you see exactly the margin, irregular vascular pattern, but there is still irregular but not amorphous surface pattern. So I would disclassify and no larger interrupted vessels. So I would classify this as uh, JNET to B. Now we did a ESD and uh, the results showed uh, tubulous adenoma with only with low-grade dysplasia and a high-grade in only 2% of the total specimen. So better than expected. Another case quite similar, 55 years old, screening colonoscopy. And this is also a lateral spreading tumor, a kind of a pseudo depression in the center. White light, TXI, difficult to decide. Is this already invasive? Is this primarily candidate for surgery? Now NBI, magnification. And now you can discuss is this type 2B or 3? Three? 3 would mean massive submucosal invasion. No indication for endoscopic resection. Looks in some parts a little bit amorphous, the surface pattern, but we still see a pattern and irregular vessels, but no larger tumor vessels. At all sites in the center. So we did an ESD a couple of days ago. We just received the histopathology adenocarcinoma invading the submucosa with 854 micrometer L0, V0, BD1, R0, uh, GT, uh, G2 differentiated. So this had been a curative treatment because it's invading less than 1,000 micron in the rectum. 
And last case from the duodenum, just referred this patient, uh, 72 years old, EGD for evaluation of epigastric discomfort, detection of a large duodenal lesion. So why does such an endoscope has a value also in this indication? So it's quite huge. But here, of course, we would like to exclude cancer. And we see a depression here in the center. Now, is this still a candidate for endoscopic uh, resection? And therefore, we would like to evaluate this suspicious part here. And now we magnify, and you see completely regular pattern of an adenoma. So there are no irregular parts. And this is, by the way, the normal, the normal regular duodenal mucosa around this lesion. And uh, this shows the excellent resolution and magnification showing even the erythrocytes. So this patient will undergo EMR. Thank you. And now, my friend Stefan, you have also some experience, and I'm looking forward to your cases. Yes, we have also two cases uh, for you with this new extra zoom endoscope. And um, it is a different light, the Lucera processor. This is uh, from, from the Lucera processor. This is really interesting. It has, the scope has a superb image quality because of a new monochromous HQ CMOS chip. And uh, we have known or we have seen the sometimes specific rainbow effect of the Lucera system, was, which was a little bit disturbing. But um, there is now a smart light control and this effect is clearly reduced. And um, we can use, as you mentioned, the gastroscope, which has a 125 volt magnification. And we can use the colonoscope for a, with a 135 uh, magnification. I have now two cases for you. The first case is a 70-year-old female, and uh, she was detected with a 2.5 centimeter lesion in the lesser curvature of the gastric body. It was a 0 uh, to A lesion, and uh, I would like to demonstrate you now our impression. You will nicely appreciate here this uh, bright white light, and using TXI, you have a wonderful contrast of the gastric uh, mucosa. We are advancing the scope here, and you will notice at 2 o'clock there are structural abnormalities. And thanks to the TXI with uh, structure, color, and brightness enhancement, this lesion nicely pops up. Now we are in the retroflexion. It is a 2 centimeter large lesion. And uh, after the detection, we are switching now to NBI. And uh, you will notice that um, when we used NBI in the past, um, the cavity of the stomach was dark. But this is now completely different. You see this bright. Uh, NBI light and now we are using this manual zoom and uh, you can nicely appreciate here the mucosal and capillary structures. So I'm using now zoom and uh, we can nicely appreciate that there are some beginning damages of the mucosal structures and you uh, nicely notice here with the underwater endoscopy um, that there are abnormal capillaries. Uh, corkscrew capillaries and blindly ending capillaries. So this is uh, suspicious for early cancer. And I think in this case, there is a clear indication uh, for performing ESD. We have performed ESD. And luckily, this case was uh, still a gastric adenoma with high grade uh, dysplasia. Another case, a 62 year old female um, with a 3.3 by 4 centimeter lesion in the middle of the esophagus. And uh, in the biopsy, there was found a well-differentiated squamous cell cancer. And uh, now uh, I'm slowly withdrawing the endoscope. And uh, you can nicely appreciate this lesion here. And uh, this is a very suspicious lesion for submucosal uh, invasion because the lesion is a little bit depressed. And uh, now we are also uh, using the magnification. And uh, we see also pathological capillaries. So this is uh, from the Inouye classification um, B2. But um, we were thinking this is still not a deep submucosal invasion. 
because the vessels are still thin and not thick. They are blindly ending, but still small. And uh, so um, after the observation with regard to Lugol about the extension of the lesion, as you can see here with uh, white light, TXI, NBI, and then Lugol solution. And um, we have now with the TXI a better delineation when we use Lugol. We decided also to perform an ESD in this case, and also a very interesting result. Um, this is a superficial submucosal invasion of 200 micrometer, and uh, uh, we could achieve still an R0 resection. The further um, treatment will be now discussed in the tumor board. Thank you, Stefan, and thank you, Horst. I, I think that, I mean, these images were really, really brilliant. I mean, amazing. So I have a question for you. How difficult it is to obtain such a brilliant images with a extra zoom endoscope? I, I know that it's not so easy to, to get in focus with, uh, with zoo extra zoom endoscopes. How does it work with the new system? The learning curve is short, but you have to take your time because of a small focal range. And this is the difference to the dual focus uh, mode, uh, which we are used with ABIS uh, X1. Uh, but I think especially for the indications you have seen for this particular case, you should take your time. Many endoscopies, and you see even live courses, everybody is focused on how to resect. But I think especially Stefan's workshop shows in a, in a very important way we have to take our time to spend time before considering treatment for clear evaluation to know if it's where's the uh, demarcation, the lateral de delineation, uh, is it already an in invasive uh, cancer in, in case of cancer. And therefore, I think time should not be an issue in imaging for selected cases, of course. This is not a routine procedure. But then I think uh, you can avoid resection, uh, but you can, in, in unnecessary cases, but you can also achieve, as we've seen, curative treatment. Thanks. Stefan, so do, do we need, in order to get the image in focus, do we need to use a cup? And do, do, do you use a, like a black cup to, to have a better image quality? How does it work? I think in such uh, specific cases, uh, you, you need a cap. You first should um, assess the lesion without a cap, but um, the cap is, from my personal point of view, very important. And we also have to learn from our Japanese endoscopists how to use a cap. And so far, there are specific caps for these endoscopes. These are not yet available. But um, I think they will be on the market soon. But uh, especially for, these, uh, for this endoscope, it is uh, somehow a prerequisite to assess the lesion by using a cap. OK, fantastic. So Horace, do you have a question to Stefan as well? <laughs> uh, in, in terms of, of cap, I think this is also an important information for our participants. When you use the standard cap, they are usually dedicated for therapeutic treatment with a four millimeter distance from the endoscope. Do you position them differently when you do diagnostic procedures? Yes, that is, uh, we put the cap uh, more close, yeah. and then it is also important how to use a cap, so you have to place your endoscope a little bit far from the lesion in the regular tissue, otherwise you would also damage the lesion, and then you have a worse impression of the, of the lesion. But um, as I mentioned, um, there will be soon uh, specific caps for these endoscopes for the diagnostic. Okay. So, Stefan, in which clinical scenario do you think that you would need to, to, to take the scope? Because usually you have to decide beforehand. So in which sit clinical situation do you think that uh, the use of such a scope would be useful? I'm thinking of a sentence of Jack. He always said when you assess a patient with a Barrett's, you have to take your best endoscope. And uh, for sure, um, this is uh, an endoscope for, for centers, for centers for esophageal surgery, etc. I think all these centers need uh, such an endoscope because um, we have a high standard and we also have to give this high standard to our patients. Okay, so thank you so much and I would like to pass over to, to you, Stefan. It was uh, fantastic, fabulous images. Thank you. Thank you.